Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Craig Perra, and you are listening to Sex Afflictions and Porn Addictions, a podcast to help you create healthy sexuality in your life and a great life. Today, we are going to be talking about betrayal trauma. I talk a lot about the perspective from the man and as our clients are typically men and uh, well today we're going to be talking about the men but through the lens of the partner who's been lied to and I have a very very special guest a she is responsible she runs our partner empowerment group and we are so glad to have her let me tell you a little bit about sandy because we haven't done a podcast in a while and i want everyone here to listen and pay attention and know that you're talking to somebody or listening to someone who knows what they're talking about she holds a master's degree in counseling psychology she's been in private practice in canada for over 20 years a registered psychotherapist a certified clinical traumatologist and a qualified clinical counseling supervisor and that's what a capital q and she's a certified uh, coach in the mindful habit system guys uh welcome uh, sandy so glad you're here thank you thank you very much for having me it's an honor you know and and one of the the, the important pieces of people who work with us you know we're open about our struggles and I just want everyone to know that Sandy is an ex-partner of someone with a porn addiction and sex addiction. Mm -hmm. um, she's lived through it. So we're going to talk about betrayal trauma today. And so for you guys who are listening, I want you to pay attention. I want mm -hmm. you, when you're acting out, when you're lying, when you're not integrity, compartmentalization, mm -hmm. low empathy low empathy so i want you as difficult as some of what you're going to hear might be i want you to listen um and pay attention and learn what's going on from your partner's perspective and partners obviously um this is going to help you so sandy here's where i want to start what is the difference between trauma and betrayal trauma is there a difference between those two words is, tell me more about that Absolutely. There's differences and there's similarities. So I'm going to start with the similarity, if that's okay. So we tend to know fear-based trauma. And that's the, you know, trauma is described as a deeply disturbing or devastating occurrence that generally results in an emotional or visceral shock. Untreated or unresolved trauma, ex traumatic experiences, can continue to persist and can lead to short and long-term mental health issues. And, and as we know from trauma, we can develop post-traumatic stress disorder, okay? In contrast, so, so betrayal trauma is very similar to fear-based trauma, as I, just, as I just said. But the contrast, the difference is betrayal trauma ensues when a person we rely upon for our very existence and or are substantially connected to and committed to violates our trust in a serious manner and you know the one of the you, things i say when i talk to guys sandy is because i'm trying to help them understand the impact of their behavior because yes. you, know, you know there's a natural defense mechanism why Absolutely. can't you move on um why do you keep talking about it why yes. you keep asking me questions and what i want you guys to understand is so your partner goes to bed one night thinking two plus two is four, thinking the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, and my partner's telling me the truth. Like, mm -hmm. it is a fabric of her reality. And it's a fabric of herself. Herself. Her cells, her soul. That trust is a fabric deep in the cells and the soul when you are committed and love someone so so incredibly much and that has been bombed that has been destroyed that yes. has that, yes. that 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 has that reality has been shattered so so all right we know that it's different and some similar true to traditional trauma um, but let's spend a few minutes let's just talk what is betrayal trauma <laughs> let, let, let's spend some time on that Okay, so betrayal trauma is, is classified as a type one trauma. 
And that is something which is unexpected and, and a discrete experience that overwhelms the, in, the individual's ability to cope with stress, fear, threat, and or horror of the event. So we may consider a, a, a car accident, a severe car accident, maybe a type one trauma. Betrayal trauma is also a type one trauma. And just like any trauma can lead to PTSD. Okay, so it's, it overwhelms the individual's ability to cope with stress. There's fear. Is he going to leave me? Am I leaving him? There's threat. It's threat, physical threat. There's threat to the relationship. Um, it's just a, a complete, when you said a bomb goes off inside, that's exactly what it is. It's a shattering of everything that the, the woman believed and felt. And it's, you know, it, guys, I know, you know, why can't you move forward? Why do you keep asking questions about this? And I, I just want to stress again that literally that reality has been completely shattered. And, you know, when, when you're driving down the street with your partner, you know, let's say a week after Discovery Day, um, and, um, there's a woman on the side of the road and like, you're looking straight ahead and you don't want to look and you know, that, that reaction and, and she blows a gasket, you know, mm -hmm. shuts down, explodes, mm -hmm. um, has a, an acute reaction. Um, that is a traumatic response. Am I right, right Sandy? Absolutely. And I, I'm going to continue that, that this betrayal trauma brings with it many fears and the unexpected arrival of D-Day, we call the Discovery Day D-Day as partners. And so your clients may have heard their partner say D-Day. And it violates our trust in one or more ways. So there's, um, oh my goodness, was he with someone and do I have the potential or have I developed an STI, a sexually transmitted infection, because my partner, my husband, whatever, was with um that another person when the belief was they were purportedly faithful okay the second is finding proof of a partner's porn and or sex addiction so finding an email finding sexting finding private social media messages pictures videos hotel receipts these are all the fundamental oh my god crises crash trauma, explosion. The, the next is about sexual abuse. For example, when there is porn addiction, there actually can be sexual abuse with your intimate partner in that manipulating the partner into having sexual relations that they may not actually like or want in the relationship, such as BDSM, but, but do it because they feel manipulated or if they don't do it, they're, they're, their husband or partner is going to be mad. Maybe this also includes taking pictures or videos of them without their full consent. Um, and, and full consent means there's no coercion, okay? No coercion, right. no manipulation. Right. Yeah, posting it online. I've had clients. Yes, yes, posting it online. Post yes, it online. sharing it with online lovers, yeah. those kinds of things, okay? So intimacy abuse is a component of this. And I want to be clear, this isn't about blame and shame. Okay? This is not blame and shaming the men who have porn and sex addiction. This is about learning and education, the devastating component of betrayal trauma. And Sandy, often, let, me, let, me, let me jump in real quick because I just want to yeah. add something that you said. And, and lately I've been having a conversation with a number of clients and it is my wife I, I, I do understand that I've heard her. She doesn't believe me that I understand. She doesn't know. And, and, and here the guy's still getting defensive, um, still not supporting her, even when that reaction is unrealistic, it being a traumatic response. Mm -hmm. And we talked about a very sensitive word. We talked about abuse. Yes. And when yes. I say that to men, and when I thought of, applied that word to me there's an instant rev no no come no not no no that i'm not that guy right. and there's such a reluctance to accepting that label and mm -hmm. 
I've had a number of clients recently, and I know you're listening, brothers, and congratulations, yeah. you're doing the work. And um, their wife was sharing a pain, sharing a memory, sharing a flashback, sharing how she's feeling. And um, this client followed my advice and acknowledged that, here's what he said in response, you know something, you're right. And in fact, I've thought about my behavior. Mm -hmm. I've reflected on the abuse, the lies, the manipulation, the, the sneaking around, the tricking, the gaslighting. Mm -hmm. And I've come to the conclusion that I was abusive. Yes. Yeah. And as he waited for the wrath to come, she went, what, 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 what <laughs> excuse me? What, 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 what? oh. Oh, and there he was, owned it. it shifted the dynamic in I'm such thinking. a significant way. And I'm okay. glad you said, Sandy, we're not here. We're not blaming. We're using strong language for, yeah. for my brothers here. You know, listen, I want uh, my sisters out there to have this information to, to, yeah. to get a, some semblance of what they're going through. But for you brothers, I want you to appreciate the impact and the gravity of your choices mm -hmm. because someone mm -hmm. has been hurt. Thank right. you, please continue, right. Sandy. So I'll continue then with intimacy abuse because maybe some of the brothers, some of the, you know, your clients, the men, and, and if, if I may call them brothers as well, um, you know, just because I am part of the mindful habit and I believe in healing. And if, you, if they're here to recover, to heal, I congratulate them. And I pat them on the back for taking the courage take, and, and, and it's bravery to, to work through this hard work. So I'm going to go back because many, many um, of the men may think, well, I was, it was pornography. It was pornography, and I didn't act out with any other person. So it's not infidelity. So there's no betrayal. It is betrayal. And how it's betrayal, it's, it's in an intimacy abuse. Because quite often with watching pornography, you're having sexual relations. The men are having sexual relations with themselves while viewing pornography, so masturbation, and or having sexual relations with other people, all the while withdrawing from the, the person who's most important in their life in an emotional, connected way and not having sexual intimacy with that one's partner. The, the what is the partner thinking, right? Like, what did right. I do wrong? I'm not Why a aren't I not man. enough? Why aren't I sexy enough? Why aren't I beautiful enough? Why aren't I, like, am I too, am I too fat? Am I, you know, too thin? Am I too, and the, the partner takes it in and their self-worth depletes and depletes, depletes because she desires you, men. She desires you. She is with you and she wants you. She wants you in a connected, emotional, safe way. And sometimes sex hasn't, the sexual intimacy maybe not has stopped, might have slowed down or might not have. But the partner feels that it's robotic. They are, there's no emotional connection. There's no vulnerability. They are there doing the act simply for the fact to get off and that she is a thing. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's literally a hole, right? Because, yes. and, and as, as, as disturbing as that may sound. Ooh, what orifice can we use? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and well, well, even absent that intentionality, the guy's head is in the pillow, gotta, you know, he can't orgasm um, yes. because he's been, you know, beating himself senseless for the past 48 hours, right. um, and he's watching things that are really, really inconsistent with the sexual expression that he wants to bring into the world, and yeah. it, he's not present, he's, he, and, and, and you guys know, your partners, right, they can feel it, they know it, they know it, they know it. oh, I think he's lying to me, act it out, they know it, they can feel it, and, and the reason for that too, Sandy, is I find that my... Um, no, I, I'm a, I'm a, I was going to sugarcoat it. I find that my um, uh, 
partner clients have a significantly higher um, EQ, emotional intelligence, uh, yeah. than the men. Yeah. Almost, yeah. almost across the board, guys. Yeah. Listen, and that doesn't mean that your partner doesn't have her own growth opportunities. Doesn't mean she doesn't have, you know, isn't uh, things she could be doing better. But on a, you know, scoring that EQ. Um, the chances are that, in my experience, universally, that it's significantly higher, brothers. So anyway, right. just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> well, and, and that could be from their, their own, the, the, not the women's, from the men's own trauma from their childhood or teen years or whatever the case may be. But it, their emotional intelligence was stilted and stuck in either that trauma or when the porn addiction started. And as we know, we all know that it starts with porn addiction before it goes to sex addiction, um, most often. The, I, I just wanna, if we can, more, there's more descriptions, if you will, for what betrayal trauma is. So it shares the same physiological, psychological, and neurological symptoms as fear-based trauma. So very similar as if you witnessed you know, uh, a shooting or were involved in a shooting, something like that. The, the, there's two ways in which it's vitally different, okay? The perpetrator is a, has a close bond with the victim. That's number one. So a deeply personalized desecration of trust pursues. Because the betrayal is of a profoundly personalized nature, Betrayal trauma can be much more threatening and, dis and disrupting to a person's ability to make sense of their world uh, than in a strictly fear-based trauma. Um, betrayal trauma, however, threatens the safety and security of the very relationship a person would generally rely on for solace when distraught. Now, they can't go to him. He's not safe any longer thus producing tremendous vulnerability just when the person is in the most enormous need. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The no, person I... they need the most is the person who has created the trauma. And the second is recidivism is risk is high. So the trauma is high because, oh my God, will they do it again? And so due to the close connected nat nature of the relationship between the perpetrator and the victim, it can be very tough to challenge or dissolve ties with the perpetrator. Consequently, victims may feel confined and endure the relationship, believing that there is no way out. They feel stuck. They don't feel they can financially support themselves or themselves and their children. And this makes the possibility of recidiv recidivism a future betrayal trauma more likely with random or accidental traumas. What that means, recidivism of trauma. Okay, not necessarily that the men are going to act out again, but if there is a future trauma, the recidivism of the betrayal trauma may come bubbling back up. If that, is, and that is the case, especially if a woman does not get help for healing. That's right. Okay? So for example, in fear-based trauma, it is rare for a victim who has been assaulted by a stranger to be assaulted by the same perpetrator a second time. So they, they go through the trauma, they get help, they heal from that trauma. But a betrayed spouse, in contrast, usually shares a life, home, children, extended family, and finances with the perpetrator. These life ties make extra extra extrication infinitely more complex and prolonged even if the victim chooses to divorce the perpetrator okay so yeah, and, let me, let me, and, and guys we're, we're using language so you know who we're talking about right so we're yes. taking the yes. same language on the trauma side and yes. bringing it here. Don't get Absolutely. hung up on those labels. Don't, don't right. you know, with perpetrator, victim, everyone has, you know, an opportunity to, to grow and to change in incredibly yes. powerful ways. We wouldn't be doing what we do if we right. don't. But as we were talking about how to present it, um, it, the language just didn't make sense because we were using different words. And, and so anyway, just wanted to put yes. that out there to carry on. And, and know that there's a difference between being a victim and being victimized, okay? So the, the, the woman's work 
for her own healing is moving from the victim to the to surviving and thriving. Okay. Right. And it doesn't mean that she's not victimized by something else in the future, but she doesn't stay stuck in the victim role. It's not oh, safe, it's not healthy, it's not growth producing to stay stuck in the victim role. And and again, yes, these are strong words. It's using trauma related words. And I also want to clarify in my work with the women, it is not about convincing them to leave because I am an ex-partner. My partner did not want to, he wanted that life. He did not want to recover. He wanted to be able to do what he wanted, when he wanted, with whomever he wanted. He told me he would stay married to me though, as long as he could do those things. And of course, I have to look after me, my, my own values, growth, and so on. And I said, no. I am here for the women to help grow them, to help strengthen them, to help them heal from the betrayal trauma, to help them be the strongest person so they can make decisions for themselves. But that is not whether to stay or to leave. That's nobody's decision but theirs or the couple's. Right? And so that doesn't factor into my work with the victim, with the, with the women. I don't want to call a victim, with the women. And, and the, the, the reason, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, why it's called, our, our partner program is called the Partner Empowerment Group. Yes. And, and I wanted to start with a, lane, with a name, not the codependent group, not yes. the victim group, not the, right. um, you know, the betrayal trauma group. I wanted to frame, starting from the name itself, what its intention is, and that is to empower you like sandy said to move beyond a yes. victim from survivor to thriver right you got to right. come out of this better and stronger that's the right. only way right. whether it's with them or without them better right. stronger more resilient like yes. uh, yeah yeah keep keep yes. yeah keep okay. going so th there are many symptoms of a trail trauma very similar many of them are very similar to fear based trauma okay anxiety depression, remaining in a state, state of hypervigilance, and men, you may know that to be in women, this is this may be you, remaining in a state of hypervigilance is, I've got to check his phone, i know, got to know where he is, I've, I've got to, what, who is he talking to, who's that woman over there? Uh, it's a state of hypervigilance, know that it's all a trauma response, and it's normal. It's normal given the circumstances. There can be complete and utter feeling of overwhelm. There can be withdrawal and isolation. Now know that porn and sex addiction thrives in secrecy. And yet partners withdraw from friends and family who either do not know about the betrayal trauma and it's out of loyalty to the partner, to the, to the men, or out of shame, guilt, disgust, and or humiliation of telling her story. Most people who have not gone through this devastating trauma have absolutely no idea the depths of the pain it causes. And so men, when you say you understand, please stop saying you understand because you don't, you can't. What you can do is say, I am here for you. What do you need? And that may, she may need a hug, she may need to be held, or she may need you to leave her alone and give her some space for a little bit of time. Sandy, I want to share with you one of my um, just powerful moments. So I remember after a therapy session, um, I was, th this is, you know, close to D-Day, rock bottom, got fired, out of impatient. And um, I, I, I and, you know, Michelle was helping me, picking me up off the ground so I could get back to providing so she could kick me out. And I said, every minute that I'm there, I'm going to do the best I possibly can and I'll never forget this moment. She said to me, I was sharing with her, you know, I realized, you know, the impact of when I was touched and the impact that had on the belief systems and the evolution of my sexuality. And uh, like, man, like that trauma lives in you. It's so deep in me. It's so deep. And, I'm, you know, I got to learn how to, how to manage it and counterbalance it and honor um, that part because it just hurt so goddamn much. And Michelle looked at me and said, how do you think I feel? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, it was in that moment, well, I can't, you know, 
walk in someone else's shoes. I can yeah. try. I can, I can put them on and see if they fit. It was in that moment where I said, oh, shit. And I appreciated the depth because I know how I felt. Yeah. I know how I felt. Mm -hmm. Keep going. This is great yeah. stuff. Thank you, Sandy. Okay. So uh, more symptoms are difficulty concentrating or being able to focus, difficulty regulating intense emotions, avoidance of emotions and painful feelings, flashbacks. So flashbacks are daytime nightmares for anyone who doesn't know. And flashbacks can be any of the senses, something we smell, something we touch, something, you know, um, that we feel, taste, etc. Nightmares. Negative thoughts, most especially, why am I not, why was I not enough? Numbness and detachment, sleep and appetite disturbances, and physical symptoms such as headaches, tremors, um, stomach aches, uh, pains in the stomach, tightness in chest. So betrayal trauma is a deeply heart-shattering experience. Many symptoms happen suddenly after betrayal trauma whereas additional symptoms may not show up for weeks or months, you know, or for some years after D-Day, because there, there's something that's found out a year past, and, and it brings it all crashing back down again. For instance, depression, grief responses, doubt, shame, and partaking in risk-taking behavior are usually delayed responses of betrayal trauma. When I say risk-taking behavior, there are some women who six months down the road, there's someone who's paying attention to another man who's paying attention to them. And they go, I wonder if he'll know what it feels like if I do this. And even have the thought of acting out in them on their own and, and taking a risk of having an affair or a one night stand. And, and that's a betrayed reaction. I am a betrayal trauma reaction. I'm not making an excuse. It still becomes a choice, just like the men becomes choice. It is, it can be a delayed reaction about revenge. Doesn't make it right. I'm just saying that can be a component of it. Um, the, you know, so what can we do? What can well, we do? Well, let, let's, so, so I, I, you know, guys, go back and <laughs> rewind and listen to those symptoms again and and partners you know not everything is going to apply to everybody but what right. we're trying to do here is to say you're not crazy uh, right. there's reasons why you're you know you see a, a a commercial that all of a sudden you know you're curled up in the fetal position and and, mm -hmm. and wondering why is to give you some context uh, what's going on inside you and drawing that uh, parallel between traditional trauma and betrayal trauma yes. for me has been very, very insightful. So it, it, listen, this, 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 this you, you, we talked earlier and started this conversation around this, you know, staining the soul, Sandy, yeah. can you heal from betrayal trauma? Absolutely. Just again, just like any trauma, you can heal from betrayal trauma. The healing will be quicker and easier when the partner is on side. So if the man is there, the men are there for their partners to say, I am here for you. What do you need? And listen, listen to what they say they need. And if they say, get the ass away from me, say, okay, I'll just go for a walk. Without your shame coming up, because your shame, I say yours because it is yours. That's your response. It's knowing that this is hers, her response, her triggers. How can you help? Many studies show that if you can respond in a loving, supportive way, the trauma triggers eventually subside and subside quicker. The trauma healing gets, gets better and more uh, quickly than um, when there is love and support versus you are shaming me, you are making me angry, and you know, you're doing this to me on purpose. Um, 
You're rubbing that my would, nose in it. You're, uh, right. you know, you're yes. bringing up the past. I thought you wanted to move forward, right? You right. hear that? Yes, yes. You know, this, I, I have to, I have to highlight this for you, for you brothers. Um, is Sandy said a very important word? Um, she said you need to listen, listen. And what that means is, just so we're clear, um, when she lists six things that you did and one of them was wrong, you don't attack the one that was wrong in that moment. You listen, you acknowledge, you support, um, you, you, you literally, li and guys, this is so, so important because when I realized that my reaction was only making it worse. <laughs> and, and, and I actually like tapped into that selfish part of me, that part that I don't like very much, just wants peace and quiet. Mm -hmm. When I started listening and, and literally like it was so hard because first of all, I'm a talker. But when I just started listening and repeating back to Michelle what she was saying so she knew that I heard it, the dynamic of the relationship changed dramatically. So practice listening, literally, literally try to go through one conversation, just acknowledging, supporting, affirming, and primarily listening. And you will see what a challenge that is, um, but do it. And I promise you, you're, you're, you're not gonna make it worse at a minimum. And there's a difference between hearing and listening. Because you may hear her say the first four things and then the fifth one may be wrong and you automatically go to your head and go, no, no, that's not right. That's not right. Then we stop listening. We're still hearing the blah, 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 but we stop listening that we have no idea what she's saying because we're in our head to do a response. We just are calculating our own response. I call it the yeah, but. Yeah, but I didn't do that. You said that and I didn't do that. Forget it. Is it really important? If the other four things she said were spot on and she's telling you how she is feeling, the response can be, what do you need from me right now? How can I help you? I am so sorry that I put us in this situation. How can I help you? Yeah, and, 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 and you know. Quiet, calm. And, and guys, like let, let's no one is saying to you know lie about something that you didn't do just to shut her up what i'm saying is if, if there are you know five things that she you know rattles off that you did and and the, that that the four were right and the fifth one was wrong you put that in your back pocket and when the time is right later on in the day or the next day you say honey it's really important for me to be honest and transparent. And yesterday when you said those five things, that last thing, that wasn't what I meant or that wasn't how it was. I just, I, I want you to know that, um, but it really wasn't important in the big picture. And if you have any questions about it, I'm happy to answer them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Open, honest, have your heart open that her pain is not to cause you pain. She is not, you know, she's not trying to bring up shame or to shame you or to blame you. She's telling you how she is in pain and, and how can you help her. And that's the best thing. And, and women, one of the things I work with is ask. Ask for what you want. Be specific of what you need. I need you to leave me alone right now. I just, I just need to go have a bath. You look after the kids. I'm going to go soak in the tub or I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to do whatever it's it's whatever the self-care component is and that's the what leads us to how can you heal from betrayal trauma it's self-care 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 and that's prioritizing self and that's not being narcissistic or self-centered or selfish it is a necessity it is a necessity to treat yourself with love and compassion in a healthy way for men Porn and sex addiction is not healthy. It's unhealthy. It's, it's, it is ruined the dichotomy of, uh, of your relationship. It has uh, of who you are as a person. You're not that guy. Be the guy you want to be. And she's working to be the woman she wants to be. And it's, and it's so, healthy. It, it, thank you. Uh, it, 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 uh, ladies, 
it's time to be good selfish. It's time yeah. for you to put yourself first. And you know this, Sandy, some partners yeah. tell us that there's, what, what do you mean put myself first? Like it is so foreign to them. It's been him, it's been the kids, it's been the community, it's been the church, it's been everything else but you. Yes. And, and, and that, that self-care, that self-care rooted in the belief system that you deserve it. Mm -hmm. that you are worthy of, mm -hmm. of that self-care because yes. you're special. You are. You and, are. And, and that's, that, that is the foundation of any progress in healing from betrayal, trauma, self-care. And many people go, well, what is self-care? Self-care is anything that is healthy for you, that grows you, that fills you up, fills your soul. So for me, one of those things is baking. I love to bake. I don't eat, I eat very little of what I bake. I usually give them to my neighbors and so on. Um, but, I, but I love to bake. It's just there's something about it, the creativity of it. There's something that I just love. So it, it can be something healthy, walking, hiking, playing volleyball, playing basketball, baseball, um, you know, watching a comedy. It can be just zoning out and watching a comedy. If you like comedy, it can, it, it's whatever works for you. It can be reading, music, dancing, you know, running, whatever works for you. Put Maybe it's taking you a road trip. First. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Um, you know, this is, uh, this, this is a commercial, okay? I just want to like be uh, uh, be honest when I'm saying self-serving things, okay? Yeah. This is this is a self-serving statement, and it is my truth, ladies. You have heard the the the, the symptoms of betrayal trauma, the mm -hmm. impact of betrayal trauma, and another podcast we're going to talk about the brain um, yeah. uh, around betrayal trauma uh, and about around the triggers around the triggers and there is a belief system in this space that we hear and we've heard over the years, not my problem, you fix you, I don't need any help. And I implore you, whether it's with me and Sandy in our partner empowerment group, whether it is with your local therapist, whether it is with your um, com you know, a, a group or wh whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, if you want to move forward quicker and dramatically increase the chances that you are going to be living a purpose driven life where you love yourself and you feel good about yourself, getting help is critical. It is mandatory. Mandatory. It's mandatory. I, I, I agree. Right? I, I, and I, if you if you don't, and you know, like Craig said, I am a qualified clinical counseling supervisor, and I recommend I have 50, 53, 55 people under me, like a, a, that I supervise right now, and I recommend to every of those interns or new therapists or regular, you know, registered psychotherapists that every single one of them has, I can't make it mandatory for them that they have to choose, but I strongly recommend that every single one has their own therapist. And the reason is shit happens in life. And even if it's uh, for maintenance, but when you've gone through trauma and when you're going through trauma, seek out a trauma specialist, seek out a therapist, you know, and a certified coach of the mindful habit for when it's porn and sex addiction, because this is yeah, this is the, um, you know, the, the people that know about what you're going through. That's the importance because if they don't know about porn and sex addiction, they may not help you very well. Well, and, and if they, or if they and don't that, know about betrayal trauma, they don't right? know. They they haven't experienced it. Now, listen. Does that mean that there aren't therapists who haven't experienced something in their life? Aren't incredibly gifted? Of course there are. Of course there are. But what, what, you know, because I've had my experience, Sandy's had hers, um, that, enhan that enhances a very important part of that coaching relationship and is called the therapeutic alliance. And that's a yes. concept you can apply to sports, uh, therapy, 
coaching, executive coaching, yeah. professional coaching. And what that means yeah. is that connection that you have to the person who's leading you on your journey has the single most uh, highest predictor of results. Yes. And yes. when you're talking to someone like Sandy, who has, has her own experience, who worked with hundreds, thousands of women who, who, who've been through this before, that in, lowers the walls, enhances that connection, and drives results quicker. Right. Absolutely. So Absolutely. important. Mandatory. There's, when you said the therapeutic alliance, Craig, it's so important, and it actually is the second most important component of a client's success is the therapeutic alliance. The first is the client's readiness. If you're not ready. Oh, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Yes, good point. Yes, you're right. We can't help anyone if they are not ready. Okay? If they're not ready and are, are resisting assistance, resisting guiding, coaching, if they're resisting, you're not ready. Until you are ready that you want to do the work, and it's hard work. You want to do the work. You want to change. You want to heal. You want to be in this better place in your life. We're here to help you. And you if help. you are in that place where it is time for you to take action, visit themindfulhabit.com. Check out our partner empowerment group where you will be working with Sandy. You'll be working with me. Um, and you'll be working with uh, my wife, Michelle, who joins me on one of the partner calls that we do. Um, Sandy, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, Sandy at SandraJoy.ca is my email, but they can, if they join the partner empowerment group, um, then I'm on, you know, the forum and, and they can message me through there as well. So my email though is Sandy at SandraJoy.ca. Uh, I'm in Canada. And uh, <laughs> uh, my website is SandraJoy.ca and uh, just, yeah, or through the mindful habit. Yeah, yeah, do do it. We 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 don't care how you how you find us. Uh, you know, whatever you gotta do. Um, but if you are ready to take action, please do so. If you find yourself, I, I you know I, I can't move forward. Um, you know the the day fifty feels like day one. Um, that means there's an opportunity for you. So, uh, Sandy, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. It's again, like I said, it's been an honor and a privilege. A true, uh, true joy to be working with Sandy, um, folks. It, it just strengthens the program. Uh, I'm, I'm just so, so blessed to uh, have Sandy in my life and to have someone as qualified as she is um, on the team and a great friend. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you all for listening. We're going to have Sandy back. If you have any ideas or questions for podcasts, feel, you know, shoot us an email. Support mindfulhabit.com or email Sandy. And uh, we'll see you next time. Embrace your power of choice and feed the right wolf inside you. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.